Yeah, from the street here on Statesville Avenue, you can see the sign for Camp North End. Really not a whole lot else, but from above, from the sky, wow, check it out. 75 acres of Charlotte historic factories and industrial buildings. They've been abandoned for decades. This is where your Charlotte parents, or maybe your grandparents, worked in the past. You make fun and you could make trouble. And in the future, well, it may be where you're working too. But honey, are you making any money? That's all I want to know. I did not know there was a Ford factory in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I did not know that the Army had a munitions depot in Charlotte. Tommy Mann says it was 1924 when Ford came to town. And with his new swift system of assembly, Henry Ford achieved the end he had been working for. With an assembly line just like these factories in Detroit, this was high tech, state of the art back then. Now everybody could have one. Ford assembled Model A's and Model T's here. They built about 300,000 cars in Charlotte. In a vintage building that's architectural art today. Really great perimeter glass around the building, and originally there were four giant skylights that ran the entire length of the building. This is really the only place in Charlotte where you can find that kind of scale. Do the big boys look for places like this? Absolutely. The big boys are those Fortune 500 companies looking at Charlotte for thousands of new jobs at a new corporate headquarters, but not necessarily brand new. You know, maybe something instead with a little history. The Department of Defense lifts the curtain of secrecy on the Army's deadly new guided missile, the Nike. Camp North End's history also includes building these nuclear missiles in Charlotte during the Cold War. This prototype vehicle rolled out of the shop in the fall of 1960. And this army vehicle used in Vietnam with the big wheels and what was it called again? It was named Gamma Goat. <laughs> but these days, the only goats at Camp North End eat kudzu all day along this fence line on North Graham Street. If we have to change something, we will. If we have to improve something, we will. We go out of our way to not make improvements that we don't have to make because we know that as soon as we change something, you can't take it back. The improvements they are making at Charlotte's biggest ever manufacturing makeover include renovations at another historic empty factory. This one built by the military during World War II, another possible corporate headquarters in the future. And there are already new tenants moving into Camp North End's smaller buildings, including this old Army maintenance garage. It's so special because of the, the soul that's here and the story and the history. And I really, I wanted to be part of something like that, so. That's why Eric Gorman moved his design agency here to Camp North End, to be a small part of something bigger. Right directly across from us is where, you know, Henry Ford built the Model T's. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, what better space and environment to be in around, hey, the sky is the limit. Then it's and Sherelle Dorsey, who works with minority startups and entrepreneurs, says her location at Camp North End, right in the middle of Charlotte's poorest zip code, sends the right kind of message to clients who come to her for help. You know, how do we better create an inclusive environment for folks of color to also build and grow? The fact is, the chronically poor neighborhoods around Camp North End often see growth as a threat to what little they do have, with no chance of connecting to the wealth and opportunity behind that growth. Well, how can you do that, you know, when you can't even associate yourself with those type of people? You know, how can you do that? Yeah, this site's been walled off with razor wire fence for, you know, almost 100 years, and uh, it's really acted as, as a barrier in this part of town. And what we're trying to do is uh, reconnect those neighborhoods by providing really great community spaces. I think it's welcome change. I mean, a lot of these neighbors um, have lived here most of their lives. From the beginning, we've worked really hard to make sure that this is a space where all kinds of people feel welcome. So how do we create things here that reach out and also um, invite people in? Beyond the murals painted by local artists and the events aimed at local residents, they're also tearing down the wall that used to separate Camp North End from the local businesses right across the street, opening up more places to meet and eat, and when the jobs come, to get back on your feet. Well, I think about it like a rock in the pond. 
the, the ripples go out mm -hmm. from the development. So as money pours into this development, it will benefit everyone that's in the circle. Yeah, that's Hugh McCall here at Camp North End for a speaking engagement. The former bank CEO isn't part of this project, but McCall likes what he sees, creating new jobs in the same place that provided generations of jobs in the past. And uh, since you informed me this was built in the 20s, <laughs> We've been waiting now right at 100 years, so it's time for, it's time has come. But honey, are you making any money? That's all I want to know. And while the renovation work continues, while the search for those Fortune 500 jobs goes on, well, it's uh, still business as usual here at Camp North End. Food truck Thursdays for lunch, Fridays under the water tower for social events, open markets on Saturdays, art galleries, coffee roasters, they're all open to the public all surrounded by almost a hundred years of Charlotte history, all hiding in plain sight here on Statesville Avenue. Amy? You know, when we were developing the Center City, we basically, the bank, subsidized everything. Mm -hmm. You have to have some subsidy to make it work to start with, but then you can cut them loose and they run free. Mm -hmm. Things are running free now up there. Right. And so that'll happen here. You'll have to do what it takes to encourage people to be a pioneer, take a risk, but it'll work. We've poured tons of money into the southeast side and into the center city, mm -hmm. but the, the people on the west side have not really felt the impact in terms of seeing it in their own neighborhoods mm -hmm. or feeling it in, in terms of their income. Part of our problem in the city with the prosperity we have and then the poverty we have, part of the problem is just not letting ourselves see it. I'm like a lot of citizens here in Charlotte, you don't, it's out of sight, out of mind. The good news is that a tremendous number of people in this city that want to help, want to help on housing, want to help the homeless. I mean, in other words, the hearts are in the right place. It's just they don't know what to do. So I. I believe that development here and continuing out the north side uh, and out west will change all that. And people will, people go gravitate to where there is safety and where there's entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I always used to like to say that I wanted a city where we could work together, play together, and pray together. Mm -hmm. So you, you got the whole thing. The, the truth of the matter is that we're going to need all of this dirt because the people are moving to this city so fast mm -hmm. that they've got to have a place to live, they've got to have a place to work, and so I'm really excited about this.